The Bug Strike Back update introduced armor upgrades in Grounded. Similar to weapon upgrades, you can upgrade each armor piece up to level 9. Each upgrade will provide more defense, durability, and depending on the path, an extra armor bonus. In this video, I'm going to look at each armor upgrade bonus, as well as the upgrade system itself, and discuss what I like and what I would like to see changed. Before we begin, I want to thank Matthew Campbell and all my other channel members for helping make videos like this possible. Let's get started. First up, let's take a look at each of the armor bonuses you're going to get for upgrading your armor. Real quick, I'm going to show you how you upgrade your armor. We're not going to go through this too much, but basically, you're just going to put a piece of armor in the smithing station. You can upgrade. When you upgrade, you're going to have an option to upgrade. One, one Levels 1 through 5 is stylish. At level 6, you have to decide to go bulky or sleek. If you go bulky, you're just going to get extra durability and defense. If you go the route of sleek, you're going to end up getting the bonuses. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the bonuses because that's what we're most concerned about. So what I did was I crafted each one of these wet armors here and I upgraded them all the way up to level nine. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna equip them. I'm gonna look at each of the bonuses they provide and give my opinion on whether or not the bonuses are actually worth it and whether or not I think they should be changed. So first up, we're gonna be looking at the Mask of the Mother Demon. Now I will say we're only gonna be looking at the head pieces, the one, the termite chest piece or the termite armor because it's the only chest piece. And then these two unique leg pieces because the full armor sets basically give you the exact same thing. As an example, the antlion Y brim is going to give you the sizzle protection. It's medium and it also gives you the plus thirst. So they're all the same. So we're just going to look at the individual or unique pieces and do note that for the full sets, you will get triple these things. Whereas for the individual pieces like the mask of the mother demon, you'll only get the one. So putting on the mask of the mother demon, what you do, if you equip them, you can actually go to the status tab and it's going to tell you the statuses you currently have. So the mask of the mother demon by default is going to give you poison coating. That was what it was before the bug strike back update. This has a chance to apply poison on all attacks. I have no idea what the chance is. I'm not sure if it's 10%, 25% because the game doesn't tell us. It's probably somewhere in that range. It is medium armor. And once you upgrade to level six, if you go the sleek route using that route, you're going to end up getting poison nova. Your melee attacks have a chance to release a burst of poison to all living beings around you. This bonus does kind of work with the actual bonus of the poison here. So you're basically going for a full poison build. I will say I did test this out yesterday in a survival world while I was streaming, and it didn't seem to proc very often. It seemed like it was maybe 10% of the time. And to be completely honest, poison in this game as of right now, unless they've secretly or stealthily buffed it, is just really underwhelming. The tick on it or the amount of damage it does is so low that I really just don't go with poison damage, poison builds. So while this is a full poison build here, I guess it, they do, do kind of work together. So I'm not sure if I would change it, but one thing I would definitely like to see at the very least would be what are these percents? I don't like when it says chance. I want it to actually say 10% chance, 25% chance, just so I can determine whether or not it's going to actually be worth it. It would also be worthwhile to know how much the poison damage does to see how if that's actually worth using. Next up, let's take a look at the antlion armor. So like I said, the antlion armor, the all three pieces are going to provide the same bonuses. By default, it's going to provide sizzle protection. Of course, we know what this is. This is going to provide you from getting the burn effect in the sandbox, as well as in the charcoal area by the barbecue spill in the upper yard. It is medium armor. And the new thing it's going to get, if you go level six and go the sleek route, it's going to give you plus thirst rate, which gets thirsty slower. Now, I didn't test how strong this is, but I will say that I do like this buff because going into the sandbox, you're going to get thirsty. It's the biggest thing there is being the sizzle effect and also getting thirsty. So these two kind of work together. I do need to see, I would like, again, I'd like to see what the rate is, like get 30%, get thirsty slower, 30%, 10%, 50%. What is it? I would like to see that added just so we can determine how good of a bonus this is. Next up is going to be the roly poly armor. And of course, the Roly Poly Armor gives you bl plus block stun. I believe this was the same as before. Applies a stun damage to your to target. The wording seems a little bit different here. I basically what I think this, think this means is each enemy will have a stun gauge, which means you have to get to a certain threshold before they will actually get stunned. This sounds like it builds that stun gauge, if I'm correct. This is heavy armor, and it gives you plus blocking strength, which means you can block more. To be completely honest, I guess this build would just be a tank build. I don't really like this plus blocking strength because... I could just use a shield. If you perfect block, that's kind of pointless. This would be, I guess, more for people who are just really not good at blocking. You just want to hold a shield and take more blocks. I really don't see it being useful except for maybe against a very few bugs like the tankier bugs. But for the most part, I just don't see this being useful. I'd probably like to see this change to something else, maybe to go with the stun or maybe something else. Because honestly, there's another armor we're going to talk about in just a second that has two stuns. So I'm not exactly sure what I would change that to, but I don't really like it that much. Next up is going to be the ladybug armor. And of course, the ladybug armor by default is going to give you plus blocking strength. I don't know if that's what it was before. In fact, I think they actually changed that. I think it was the actual Scarlet Embrace, right? Or I could be wrong. I don't know. But it gives you plus blocking strength. So basically, it's giving you the same effect as the 
armor we just showed, the Roly Polar armor, once you level that up, if you go the it is heavy armor, and if you go the sleek route, this is where the good bonus is going to come in. Increase the amount of healing you receive from all sources. So this will be from smoothies. This will be from any type of bandages or food you eat that heals you. I think it also works in tandem with the Mosquito Needle, which has Life Leech. So basically anything, this is going to give you a buff. Again, I'd like to see what percent it increases it by. I haven't tested this out exactly to see how much it is. But a lot of times with these things, it's hard to tell how much things are increasing because it's such a small amount. So I'd like to see what that is. Overall, I do like this, although the plus blocking strength to me is kind of weak. Next up is going to be the B armor. B armor is going to be plus bow stun, apply stun damage to target. So basically, if you hit an enemy with a bow shot, you're going to build its stun gauge. Once you hit the threshold, it's going to get stunned. It is light armor, so it's good in that case. And it also gives you plus slow shot, which arrows have a chance to slow the target. This is if you go the sleek route. I do like the fact that these work together. So basically, you have a chance to stun, you have a chance to stun them eventually, and you also have a chance to slow the targets, which means it's going to take longer for them to get there. That does seem like a good build. I'm definitely going to test this out with an archer build because I think this could be useful. Again, these things where it says chance, I don't know what the chance is. If it's only like 10% of the time, that's kind of useless. But if it's like 25% of the time, that would be better. This set overall, I do like in general, or the yeah, this, this set I like overall in general, especially if you're doing an archer build. Now, the biggest disappointment so far with all these armor upgrades for me is the spider armor. In my survival world, I just went straight ahead and started upgrading my spider armor because I was like, oh my God, please tell me we're going to get movement speed or some type of better stamina. The default is going to be stamina regen delay, reduces the time, or minus stamina regen delay, reduces the time it takes for stamina to start regening. That overall is good. It is medium armor. And unfortunately, the bonus if you go the sleek route at level six plus poison damage increases the amount of damage of all poison effects caused by you. Now, this is only useful if you are either using it with the Mask of the Mother Demon, in which case you're not going to have the full set bonus, or you're using a poison weapon such as the Poison Arrow, the Larva Blade, and I believe the Spider Fang Dagger all apply poison. Otherwise, this set bonus here is completely useless. I, oh, I'm i just going to be straight up front. I absolutely hate this bonus right here. Get rid of it right now. Put on here something like increase stat or increase stamina or something with stamina maybe your attacks do less stamina or movement speed would be even better i would like to see the movement speed because then it bring back the old spider armor in combination with the new spider armor bonus of the stamina so either make it something with stamina or make it with movement speed i just don't see myself using this armor spider armor in my opinion went from being like the best armor my favorite armor a couple of updates ago to now it just is like it's getting moved down the down the list in terms of what i want to use Next up is going to be the Firefly Headlamp. Now, the Firefly Headlamp is heavy armor. It, of course, produces light, which is not going to show in here. And it says plus pebble harvest speed, pe bust open pebbles in fewer hits. This is actually pretty useful because somebody said it only worked on pebbles. I actually tested it. It does actually work on quartzite. So if you are farming quartzite in the Ant Hill behind Burgle's lab, the Oak Tree lab, down in the Black Ant Hill, anywhere underground where the maybe where the larva den is, you are going to be able to get bust the quartzite and it looked like one fewer hit now i was using i think i was using testing a pebblet hammer and i was only, and i didn't even have it leveled up and i think it took three or four it was three hits with the pebblet hammer and it was only two hits without it so of course this might become less useful later on when you've upgraded your hammer and you can break stuff in one hit especially if you crit but early game i could see this being pretty useful for harvesting quartzite for upgrading your weapons next up is going to be the koi scale armor this is going to give you the plus perfect block extends the perfect block timing window and then, of course, the bonus here for each piece is going to be plus parry stun. Perfect blocking and attack temporarily increases the stun damage you deal. Now, I like this combination because this is essentially going to reward you for perfect blocking, and perfect blocking is going to allow you to increase stun damage. So if you use this with a high stun weapon, such as the Salt Morningstar, the Club of the Mother Demon, one of the hammers, this could be a really good build. And if you're good at perfect blocking and you got like, you, this can just I could see the Koi armor being very useful. So I do like this bonus a lot. Next up, let's take a look at the bubble helmet. Of course, the bubble helmet is used underwater. It is light armor. It is it gives you veteran diver, which means you can hold your breath longer. Of course, you're going to probably use this if you're exploring the pond lab or the pond depths. And then the new bonus, if you go level six, sleek is going to give you hyper stamina, which is regain stamina faster. This is perfectly useful to me. It's just going to let you get your stamina back faster when you're swimming in combination with the longer being the longer breath hold, which means you're just going to be able to stand underwater water longer and move around faster. So overall, a very useful combination. Next up is going to be the marksman's cap. This is one where if they just reversed the bonus you get at level six with the default now, I would be happy. So in, by default now, it's going to give you plus crit energize which critical hits provide you with an instant stamina boost. 
So this is basically determined upon your critical hit chance. So of course, if you have Coup de Grass level two, you're gonna have a 25% critical hit chance. That means this could proc one every four times. You can also increase that by giving yourself, by eating certain foods or drinking certain smoothies. So theoretically this could proc pretty often, maybe every other hit. This is medium armor, that didn't change. And now it's the bonus for going the sleek route. Attacks with a bow do more damage or bow attack. This used to be the default. I would like to see these reversed because to be completely honest, this now means that in order to kill a scarab on medium mode, you're going to have to have your marksman's cap leveled up, I think, to at least level six. Because yesterday, without having it leveled up, I did not one shot the scarab using the normal build of the feather arrows. So I'd like to see these reversed, have this be the bonus on top of it, and have this just be the default. Otherwise, the marksman's cap, you're just going to have to wait till you get it to level six to use it. Next up is going to be the black ant armor. This is going to give you plus crit after block as the default. And that's blocking attack has a chance to increase your critical hit chance for a short time. This is heavy armor. Oh, it's medium armor. And it has plus crit hyper stamina. This is new. Critical hits increase your stamina regen for a short time. Now, these two will work well together, but it really kind of depends on how often you can crit. And basically, like I said, if you go crit build, I could see myself using this. I'm definitely interested in trying this out because I always use coup de grass. It would probably give me a reason to use more smoothies and more foods, specifically the ones like the, I believe it's the spider slider that gives you, and there's one other one that gives you a plus critical hit chance. So this could be really useful. I'm interested in trying that out just to see how much more damage you do and so, uh, block. So basically block, and then you get the critical hit chance. So this could give you a much better chance of getting a critical hit chance. But again, I doesn't really say here, it just has a chance to increase. So again, I really like to see what these percents are for these things. But overall, I think that is a useful combination. Next up, let's take a look at the eye patch. This is the eye patch plus. So it's going to give you plus attack. Attacks do more damage. That's the same. It's going to give you minus damage reduce, reduces your resistance to taking damage. That's the same. It is light armor and it is now going to have minus threat generation. I believe, if correct me if I'm wrong, I believe before it was something to do with attack speed or something like that. But now it has minus threat generation, decreases enemies desire to attack you. I guess overall, because it's giving you the Basically, you're going to take more damage for each hit you take. These kind of offset each other, so it kind of makes the eye patch a little bit better. But again, like here, where it says attacks do more damage, I don't know exactly. I want to know how much more they do. Do they do 10% more, 25% more? So if we could just get that information in there, that would be super helpful for determining whether or not it's actually useful. Next up, let's take a look at the Might Hat. This is an individual piece. This is going to give you plus hyper stamina by default, regen stamina faster. It is medium armor, and it's going to give you minus stamina regen delay. Reduces the time it takes for stamina to start regening. This would be useful. But one of the things we're going to talk about when we get once we get past the all the mutations here or all the sorry all the bonuses is when I talk about the overall system, we're going to see that a lot of these bonuses here that you're seeing for the sleek route at level six, you're probably going to never end up getting them because you're probably not going to level up these specific armors. So let's talk about that in just a second. Let's get through the rest of these armors real quick. Next up is the acorn armor. So the acorn armor now, before I believe it gave you, didn't it give you something like maybe more blocking ability or something like that? I can't remember, something along those lines, but, or maybe it was just more max health. Now it gives you plus threat generation, increases enemies desire to attack you. That is a negative bonus. That means putting this armor on is literally going to make bugs attack you more, which to me makes absolutely zero sense. It's heavy armor and it gives you plus max health once you get it to level six. We're going to see why this is a problem later because this is a tier one armor and more likely than not, you're not going to be leveling tier one armors up to even see these effects. So overall, I do not like the change with the acorn armor. At the very least, I would say reverse them. And I don't even know why you would have threat generation on there. Like, why would you want to get attacked more? It makes absolutely zero sense. Let's take a look at the red ant armor now. So this is, of course, going to give you the hauling strength so you can haul more items. Each piece will let you carry one extra item. It is light armor and it gives you cut down grass and fewer hits. I did test this out. It does work on grass. It also works on weed stem. So... It's going to work for anything that you're chopping down. This would be, this will definitely be useful, but as we're going to see the cost of, we're going to see in a minute, the cost of upgrading armors is super expensive right now. So while this is a good bonus, I doubt that most people are going to end up using it because it's going to cost way more to upgrade. It's going to cost way too much to get to the point of upgrading this, getting it to level six. Next up, we have the grub goggles. So the grub goggles are going to give you Mac plus max stamina. So you get more max stamina by default. They are medium armor. And then at level six, sleek route, they're going to be the plus hyper stamina, which regains stamina faster. These work really well together. This is basically the combo, almost like a combo I'd like to see for the spider armor. So maybe if they put this on the spider armor, it would be better. This is a tier one armor. And like I said, we're going to talk about the tier one armors in just a second because they're going to end up, you're not going to end up using these things very long anyway. But let's move on to the gill tube. Gill tube is light armor. Some of these I don't think had armors before. I, don't, I think everything is an armor now. I think the gill tube might have been one that did not have an armor type. Maybe the other diving ones as well. It gives you junior diver, which means you can hold your breath longer. So it's similar to the bubble helmet. 
except it's going to let you hold your breath not as long. And then it gives you the same bonus of the plus hyper stamina, regain stamina faster. So overall, good bonuses here that work well together. But are you really going to level up the guild tube when you can get the bubble helmet shortly thereafter? Next up is going to be the gas mask. The gas mask gives you gas guard, prevents damage from all gas based attacks and effects. This is the only armor piece that I saw that you cannot level up the sleek route, meaning that you get no extra bonus from it. The only thing you can do is get the extra defense and durability by going the bulky route. And then the last headpiece here is going to be the clover headpiece. Plus fuller, which means you stay full longer. I believe that was what it was before this update. It is light armor, and it gives you plus regenerate, regenerating health over time. This will be super useful early game, but like I said, when we see how much it costs to upgrade your armors, are you actually going to grind that many resources to get this? More likely than not, by the time this will become useful, you are already going to be moved on to a tier 2 or a tier 3 armor. So that's all the head pieces. Let's take a look at a couple more. This is the termite armor. This is the only chest piece that is unique that doesn't fit one of these other sets. And what this does is it gives you a light, it's light armor. It's going to give you dust guard, grants immunity to all dust based effects. So that's going to be useful against dust mites attacks. And then it also provides a dust cloud. Melee attacks have a chance to release a cloud of salt dust. Now it's only useful for melee attacks. Now for me, if I was fighting the dust mites, I'm probably going to use a bow because I just don't really want to get close to them because they do end up just tearing through your the, the durability of your armor. This will probably help. But here again, it says have a chance to. I just tested this before I started recording this. The chance is very low. And to me, it's just like, I think what it does is it basically produces the same result as Shinobi Sneeze where you can get away. Why would you hit an enemy, have like a, it looked like it was about a 10% chance of a proccing. So I have a one in 10 chance of having a proccing, then I'm going to run away or maybe distract the enemy I'm fighting. This seems only useful for fighting dust mites, but overall, I just don't like this unless it was maybe a full armor set. This just bonus just does not seem that good. So I wouldn't, I mean, I don't see myself ever using the termite armor. Last but not, or second, the penultimate one's going to be the aphid slippers. So the aphid slippers, of course, are going to give you the plus, the quickness, which is run faster. This is what the spider armor had before the Into the Wood update, I believe, or maybe before the one before that, I can't remember. It's light armor, and the leveling up to level 6 is going to be plus sprint distance, reduces the stamina cost of sprinting. I believe that was on the B armor a long time ago. So these do work well together, but again, we're going to talk about this in a second. Are you actually going to waste resources that are hard to get on the, a level or a tier 1 armor that you're probably not going to use very often? Last but not least is going to be the Fin Flops. They're light armor. They give you swim speed as expected here. Now they're plus swim speed because they're the plus version, which means you swim faster. There are is also the regular fin flops, which are just going to give you swim speed. And then they're going to give you the plus sprint, sprint distance, reduce the stamina cost of sprinting. So basically using the fin flops plus either the di the di the bubble helmet or the gill tubes are just going to make swimming overall faster. So overall for the swimming gear, I think they're all great. I think that I like the idea that they added new bonuses, but... What we're going to talk about next is I'm going to flip over to a sheet that I put together where I looked at how much it costs to upgrade all the armors. And what we're going to end up seeing is that most of these armors, you're just not going to upgrade because it costs way too much. It's going to take way too much time. And like I said, by the time you get the resources, you're going to move on to the next tier of armor. So let's hop over there real quick and take a look at that information so I can wrap this video up and give my final thoughts on the armor upgrade system as it stands right now. All right, so what I did was I took all the information for the, or all basically gathered all the information, how much it costs to upgrade things, put them in this little chart here, these charts here. And over here on the left is the current upgrade cost. So as of now, you can upgrade each armor piece from levels one to nine, same as weapons. The only difference being is that you level up one weapon all the way up to level nine. For armor, if you're going for a full armor set, you're gonna have to multiply these numbers by three. That would mean that you're gonna need 92 grub plates, grub leather plates to make a single, or to upgrade a single armor piece. If you wanna upgrade a full armor set, you're gonna need 276. That is a lot. And if we go down here, you're gonna look and you're gonna see that in order to upgrade one armor piece, basically what you're gonna need is about 37 grub hides. You're gonna need 122 sap. You're gonna need 92 crude rope, 12 berry chunks, 30 acid glands, six pupa hide, and 15 bug glue. Now, you're gonna see here that the grub leather plates get you to level five for everything. At level six, you're gonna have to use berry plates. The reason there's numbers over here is the berry plates crafting recipe requires you to use, I think, two, one grub plate per. And then down here, you're gonna see that the pupil leather plates are going to cost berry leather plates, and the berry leather plates cost grub leather plates, so they end up compounding it. So that's why you're seeing here that for each individual armor piece, this is the current cost. Now, the parts over here are not a big deal. It's not hard to get berry leather. In fact, I have hundreds of berry leather because in my current world, one day I did or one a couple streams in a row, I just built like a little berry farming factory up in the hedge. And I just had I, I think I have like nine or ten jerky racks. Every couple of days I was going around getting all the berries and putting them on there. So I have hundreds of berry leather. Pupil leather, you don't need that much of it. So it's pretty cheap to craft these. 
these are the numbers. We don't have to talk about every single one of them, but essentially what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna be spending an inordinate amount of time farming grubs right now because you're gonna need about 37 grub hides in order to get just one weapon up or one armor up to level nine. Now, the grubs only have a chance of drop. They have a chance of dropping zero to two grub hides right now, which means every grub you kill is, is on average, you're gonna get one. That means you're gonna probably have to kill 37 grubs in order to upgrade one armor. And that is just a ton of time. And it also is time consuming. Besides farming them, you have to then take them back, put them in the grinder. Then you have to craft, then you have to upgrade all the things, turn them into the other plates and stuff like that. So in general, the this is just a super grindy system right now. I do like the fact, I do like, I mean, overall, I kind of like the, the concept of it. I just think it should change. So one of the suggestions I had, I posted this on their Discord and I was getting the attention from some of the, one of the community managers. So that I think there are going to be looking into this because the two big things that have been talked about, and I'll probably do another video on the mix. Uh, the other one was mixers. Basically, everybody wants mixers to be repeatable. So they did ask some, me some, they asked a couple questions about that to me and I responded to them. So hopefully they're going to look at that and these armor upgrades because the armor upgrades are another or another, or they're kind of similar to the weapon upgrades where before. But we ended up getting the arm, the weapon upgrades ended up getting lost in the shuffle because of all the other stuff that happened. And in my opinion, the weapon upgrades are probably still too expensive, but that's a story. That's a topic for another day. But these armor upgrades are just insanely expensive. My first go around on what I thought might be a better use is going to be the, the just reduce the cost overall to two, four, six, eight, ten instead of the two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty two grub plates. This would reduce the cost significantly and make it a lot cheaper to craft them. The other thing that I didn't mention was in order to make the scraps, you need the grinder. The grinder is only available after you complete the haze lab. More likely than not, the haze lab is going to be the second or third lab you complete. This means you're going to have to complete most likely the hedge, the pond, and perhaps the haze, or at least some combination of them. You, the game now guides you to do the hedge first. So you're going to do the hedge and then the haze, or the hedge, the pond, then the haze. You're going to have to do all that with level zero armor. The armors have been nerfed. They 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 provide much less damage resistance now than they did before this update. All the bugs do more damage, which means for a new player specifically, going into that haze lab or even the other labs, like the Orb Weaver Juniors are going to do a ton of damage to you if you have unupgraded armor. Going into the haze lab and, or just even getting to the haze lab, getting past all the infected insects, but going into that haze lab, that final room where the infected ladybug is, the infected larva, that is going to be an absolute nightmare doing that in a new save and especially for a new player. You're just going to go in there and just die over and over again because you're just not going to be able to, with, unless you're just absolutely great at perfect blocking, but then you have all the explosions and stuff like that. So the grinder, at the very least, the grinder either needs to be available after repairing Burgle or at the very at the be very beginning of the game or from the hedge lab chip, although I'd like to see it be more, more at the beginning of the game. That was my suggestion for this. A couple other suggestions people had were, and this kind of gets to the point of not ever leveling up the tier one armors, perhaps just having each tier armor have one upgrade. So maybe the tier one armors, only you upgrade them one time using the grub leather plates, and then the tier two armors, you just use the berry leather. And then the tier three, you just use the pupa leather. Honestly, I wouldn't mind them just getting rid of the plates altogether and just using the leather. Let us just put the grub hide on. If they could just get rid of the scraps altogether, we could just put the grub hide on the jerky racks or craft them by hand like we can do with the berries and the pupa hide. Like, why not just let us do that? Make it much simpler, simplify the system. And to be honest, maybe they could do something where you could level, at the very least, make it where you only have to level up the tier one armors to like level five. Maybe tier two armors go to level seven and a tier three can go to level nine or like that other person suggested, which is kind of even a better idea. Just have a one time upgrade. Maybe just make it 10 grub grub leather upgrades and uh, upgrades the tier one armors. And then you get the bonuses we have right now. And then 10 berry leather gives you or maybe 20 berry leather because it's easier to get. Let you upgrade the tier twos. Something like that where it's a tiered system. So maybe for the tier. OK, so for the tier ones, you would use the grub. For tier twos, you would do grub for level one, and then you would use the berry for level two. And then for tier threes, there'd be three upgrades, one grub, one berry, one pupa, something like that. I don't know. Just overall, again, we're back into the system where they're adding systems to the game to make it more grindy. I don't want to see the game end up having people just getting turned off by it because they're just spending more time grinding resources and repairing their equipment then they are actually enjoying the game, building, fighting things, whatever they're going through the story. Because when, the other thing that's similar to the weapons, once you upgrade your armor, you're going to end up needing to repair it using the, the new thing. So like as an example, the upgrading your armor, once you upgrade it with a couple grub leather plates, you're going to now need to have a grub leather plate to repair it. Same thing with the berry leather, same thing with the pupa leather plates. Once you get them to a certain point, you're going to need those resources to repair them, which means you're going to be doing more grinding for those resources. So 
Overall, I really hope they take a look at both the bonuses we talked about earlier, kind of rebalance them to make them more useful because no one in their right mind is going to level up any tier one armor. And there's a good chance you're probably not going to level up very many of the tier two armors just because the tier three armors overall are going to provide you better defense and perhaps even better bonuses. We got to do have to test them out. But like as of right now, my favorite armor was the spider armor. With that poison coating, I kind of regret upgrading it, and I might just go back and revert back to the save that I had before I joined the public test server, just so I don't waste all the resources I used on it. Because having like I just I'm never used poison damage for anything, so it's become completely useless to me to upgrade them and waste all these resources on it. So anyway, again, I know I talked for a long time here, similar to my last video, but I just kind of want to put this out here. These are the kind of videos I plan on doing between now and the end of the public test server. Because I think the best value I can provide and I think the best value as a community we can provide is giving the developers feedback. They are listening. They listened during the last public test server. They made some changes. They made changes into this update from before. So I think the best value we can provide right now, rather than sitting here and doing guide videos that are more likely not going to change in a week or two, is going to be to do stuff like this, looking at the changes that have been made in the public test server and providing feedback so that we can get those things addressed before the actual update goes live. So when the bulk of the player base comes and plays it, that they'll have a more enjoyable experience and we'll have a more enjoyable experience. So anyway, that's my talk on the armor upgrade system, what I think about it. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments down below. If you found the video interesting, if you made it this far, make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.